My name is David Beeler. I'm a solutions architect with Vision Solutions, and we're here to t today to talk about the Double Take technologies, uh, the different products that we use to provide high availability and disaster recovery for your servers. As far as Vision's uh, corporate profile goes, uh, obviously we're here today to talk about mostly Windows and Linux open systems based solutions, but we also have solutions in the power systems and cloud computing world as well. Uh, a lot of strong partnerships, as you can see, over 25,000 customer installs, over 800 partners. Uh, we have really strong uh, customer care group. Our, our tech support is excellent, 24-7 tech support. And then there's a little more information there about the uh, company's financials. When we talk about double take, we're talking about real time replication. So that's byte level changes only. Um, it's going to be an asynchronous replication. It's going to be a more efficient replication than typical schemes. As you can see, there's a little bit more information about the different uh, WAN optimization features and just some other usability aspects of the product. And we'll get into all of those a little bit more during the presentation. First, we're going to talk a little bit about exactly how Double Take Replication works, the actual replication engine. And this is going to be the replication engine that drives three out of the four products that we talk about today. Uh, so this will give you a good high-level overview of exactly what's going on. So what will actually happen, on the left-hand side, you'll see the, uh, a picture of your source server or production server. And on the right-hand side is your uh, backup HADR server. So you'll install the Double Take software. And as you can see, there's two main components that come with the Double Take software. We have a service component as well as a file system filter driver. Uh, once you've installed the Double Take software, you'll use one of our consoles to set up the protection for your particular server, and you'll be able to choose from the different technologies that we're going to discuss today. But that console is going to walk you through the process of protecting your data. And part of that process is choosing the data set which you're going to protect, or what we call the replication set. Once you've chosen that, you need to do an initial copy of that data set over to the target server, uh, what we call a mirror. So once you've established that replica on the target server of that data set that you're going to protect, um, then you'll see exactly how the real-time replication works. So once you've done that, as modification, or as I.O. comes down through the stack, I should say, the file system filter driver is actually looking for modification ops. So if you're just reading from the disk, we don't care about that because you're not actually changing data. But if the op that's coming down is a modification op, and it's changing data in that replication set, that data set you intend to protect, uh, we're going to key off of that and we're going to replicate that particular op and allow the original modification op to go down to the file system. Once that's been written to the file system, the acknowledgement that comes back up indicates to us that that was a change to the disk, a change to the file system. So we replicate, we packetize, sorry, that replicated op and ship it off to the target server and make that exact same write in the exact same location using the exact same data. And as you saw, the original op went back on its way back over to the uh, end user or application that initiated it. Uh, we're not going to interrupt the flow of that. That, again, is an asynchronous replication. So we're not waiting for the op to be written, the replication op to be written on the target server. We're allowing normal productivity to uh, continue. So common question that's asked is, well, what happens if for some reason the source and target server can't talk to each other, um, if the network goes down, something of that nature? Initially, what's going to happen is we're going to queue to memory. And that's a configurable setting that you can select uh, to, to give a double take exactly how much memory you want. And once we used up the available memory, then we're going to begin queuing to disk. So once that latency is resolved, whether it was a network error that was fixed or just a general um, uh, overload of the network and, and the servers can't communicate, once that latency is resolved, then we're going to send those replicate those queued replication ops over to the target server. And the key here is that we're going to send them in the exact same order and make those writes in the exact same order that they were made on the source server. Maintaining that write order preservation is critical to maintaining data integrity. So that's the basic overview of the, the Double Take Replication Engine. Does anybody have any questions about that initial part before we continue? No? Okay. Now we're going to talk about the actual Double Take products. We have our Recover Now for disaster recovery, the Availability product, obviously, for high availability, the Double Take Move product is a migration-specific product, 
And the Double Take Share product is a data movement, uh, data transformation product that's specific to databases. The first three of those products use the Double Take replication engine that I just described, and the last one uses a different mechanism for replication. When we talk about Double Take availability, we're talking about, again, real-time replication. One of the key differentiators here is that with the availability product, your intent is to fail over that source server. If the source fails, you want the target to fail over and come up and represent that source on the network. Um, the way we do this is by implementing a failover monitor on the target to check the source's health, to check its status, to see if it's running. So with availability, you're setting things up ahead of time so that the target server can fail over for the source. Um, the other key differentiator for the availability product is that you're looking at very low RTO times. So your, your intent is to protect mission critical servers, and you're looking at RTO times in the 15 to 60 minute range. Um, there's a couple other features there that, that deserve mention, and we'll talk a little bit more about the availability product later and get into more details about the specific technologies that are provided through the availability product. With the Double Take Recover Now product, now you're looking at protecting your Tier 2 and Tier 3 servers. You're actually looking at higher RTO times, more in the 4 to 6 hour range. And with the Recover Now product, uh, while it does offer some other features that aren't available with the availability product, such as your object level restore, but with the Recover Now product, you do not have the failover monitor. So at the point at which the source or a source fails, um, you're going to use the Recover Now console to begin that recovery process. And that's why you're going to see those longer RTO processes. So again, higher RTO and no failover monitor when you're comparing it with the availability product, but both still use the Double Take replication engine. And then the Double Take Move product. And again, this is a migration-focused product. Uh, the difference there is that it's a cheaper solution than the other two um, that we've already discussed, but it's a time-sensitive activation code because it's focused on that migration project. It's Once you begin your initial uh, work with the, with the product, it's going to have a 31-day activation code, which expires after that point in time. You're going to get basically the same functionality as the Double Take Availability product, uh, with the exception of instead of having a failover monitor, because it's a migration project, you're going to have cutover versus failover. So either you can choose to have the migration happen automatically once the uh, source is synchronized with the target server, or you can set that up so that you can manually do the migration at the, at the time of your choosing. And then finally, the Double Take Share product. And this is exclusively focused on database uh, protection, database replication, data movement, data transformation. The idea here is that the, the actual replication set we talked about earlier, that replication set you select is, is based on the database schema itself. So that modeling helps you to choose that data set. And that modeling allows you to go in and, and, and get into the schema and choose either individual columns, individual tables, or actual whole uh, databases themselves. Because of that modeling, because of how we choose the data, um, that allows you to break through those bounds, the normal bounds that confine you to do, say, Microsoft SQL protected by a Microsoft SQL server. With the Double Take Share product, you can actually have Microsoft SQL protected to an Oracle server on, uh, on a, Oracle on a Linux server, I should say. Um, so you're able to kind of go across platform as well as cross operating system. Uh, common use you'll see for the uh, Double Take Share product is in a branch setup where you have multiple branches that each have their own database server that are using the Double Take Share product to not only move, but also transform the data to a central um, database server. And at that central database server, that's where you're actually going to run your analytics, your reporting, your business intelligence, so that you can offload that computational processing from those branch offices to that central site. And conversely, you can also use that for a distribution scheme to push data out from a central site um, to multiple branch locations if you choose.